can introduce some forceps. And I can take very tiny samples and remove that piece of tissue. And the fine tissue when it comes out. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Good. See if we can actually get through the door without the jump. It was just one night. I went to bed perfectly all right, woke up in the night crying because it hurt so much in my wrists. I spent a month in hospital having a knee replacement and that was pretty strange for a child just starting nursery school. Mummy's not at home and actually the effect on him was his teachers thought he might be deaf but he wasn't. He was just living in a little world all by himself. The children learn to become very independent very early. There's no time to think about it. You're just constantly struggling. If you actually stopped and thought long and hard about it, you, you'd sink into a complete morass of despair because, um, because you know that, that, that life is never going to be, in quotes, normal. The phone starts ringing all the time. <laughs> Conditions like diabetes are easy because you do a blood test and you measure sugar and it's simple. There's no single procedure that you can do that says yes you've got rheumatoid. It's a clinical diagnosis and until we get more of the molecular pathology it's going to be tricky. You're looking at this, the tissue, the histology, the microbiology, the x-ray imaging and putting it together as a pathotype, that means a collection of these features, like you would do in breast cancer. You'd have both the tissue diagnosis, the imaging, and then the treatment would be tailored to the type of cancer you have. We have to do the same thing here. I did almost kind of grieve for a future that I might not have um, and for, for pain that I'm not in now but that I might be in um, and my partner as well and I think you know together we you know we went to, to quite a dark place for a little bit. I know that I, I'm on the radar now, so the minute I get any swelling, the minute I get any, any um, worsening of my symptoms, I can come and, and get treated. And the problem with my mum is that she wasn't treated early enough and aggressively enough, so that's when it was in the early days that a lot of the joint damage happened. It's a disease which has proved impossible to cure after many, many decades of research. I think curing patients with established rheumatoid is a uh, goal that many researchers um, are striving towards, but it's proved an elusive goal so far. Trying to prevent people from getting rheumatoid in the first place is another strategy for tackling this chronic condition and I think represents a really exciting avenue of research.
that it'll be based around a range of different approaches to testing. Firstly, genetic testing, where we look to see what genes people carry. Um, secondly, other blood-based tests, maybe where we look to see what antibodies patients have in the blood. There are certain antibodies which put people at risk of having rheumatoid arthritis. And then it's probable that both of those components would be put together with other elements, like do you have a history of rheumatoid arthritis in your family? Do you smoke? Smoking puts your risk of rheumatoid arthritis up. So bring that whole constellation of things together.